Yeah, it's joking off. It's joking off. I don't want to say it. It's joking off. No, I won't, I, won't, I, won't go that, I won't go that hard, guys. Nah. Uh, we're about to look like fools. Okay. You guys are not I'm not. No, I'll go easy, but obviously there's going to be like some hard ones. Pause. You know, <laughs> I'm obviously not gonna show you Cambodia, but I might show you a. Yeah, I might show you a. Well, let's 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 do the next one. Okay, next one. This is topics to discuss. Is the headline. Family, it's your boy Shab Z Medallion, and this is my brother, Big Time C1. Another brother on set, Big EP, and we are blessed. And Holy Fred. Now, this one is simple it's topics to discuss. You can spend about two minutes if you want, three minutes if you want on this topic. Cool. Different, various topics, and yeah. The first one being, it's been a huge debate, it's a very fun one, light one to start with. The best fries at a fast food joint. Mm. Some have argued McDonald's have the best fries. Some have argued Steers have the best fries. Steers. Some have argued. So that's right. Steers. Some have argued Burger King. Rocco Mamas. The best fries. Is it better than Mortachos? <clears throat> that's a good shot. <laughs> but still, Rocco Mamas. Mm. Rocco Mamas. They extra add they, they chip, extra chips price? Boy. I'm still staying with Steers, man. Wow, sir. Steers, they got good chip seasoning, good sauces. True. Um, true. And you have different variations of the chips, right? If you have a pack of chips, some are slop chips, some are nice, almost like crispy, but not too burnt, mm. you know? Yeah. Out of curiosity, who's got the worst chips before I jump into the next one? Nando's. Ooh. Nando's. Nando's has the worst. The worst. Um, chicken licking. Worse than Wimpy? But chicken Nando's licking. is worse than Wimpy. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm naming the bottom. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, chicken yeah. licking. Nando's. He, na he mentioned Wimpy. Worst chips. Yeah. But. But Wimpy's not bad. Wimpy's not bad if because they have the chip seasoning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They but do have chip seasoning. Yeah. I'm, I'm naming the bottom. I'm not saying it's all the way down. But yeah. Well, if you guys had children, how would you advise that they chase their dreams in today's time? Bro, I am very wary about giving advice when it comes to things people care about. So I think I'm going to follow my child. Like, if it looks like they're interested in this and I have the capacity to facilitate them exploring that habit or that talent or that curiosity, then I'll facilitate. Maybe a few years down the line, their thing changes and they want to do something else and I'll facilitate that. But while I'm facilitating, I'll try my best to teach you know, there's a business side to this thing. Um, at the end of the day, at a certain age, you're going to have to make money. We're living in a capitalistic world and you have to think about surviving and living your dream. You know, how do you balance both? You know? Some would argue that send the child to school first before they go try to change their dream so that they could have something to fall back on. What true, true. But taking my child to school... A teacher is there to teach you the subject that you're attending class for. They're not there to ensure that you're having the experience that is for you and your interests and the dreams that you want for yourself, right? I, bro, when we look back at school, dog, like, I feel like certain schools we attended, some teachers weren't paying that much attention. Yep. And then we changed schools. We went to Pretoria. The school that we went to, Doxa Dale, there was a certain 
amount of attention those teachers had for you because we were fewer in the class. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change that the teaching wasn't custom made strictly for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some work as a parent that I need to do to help balance the work teachers do for school. I'm not saying I'm about to become a school teacher. I'm taking my child to school. Mm -hmm. But if my child is genuinely interested in something, you got to find a way to make them understand that, yeah, chase your dreams, but uh, make it a business. I think I would just be teaching my kid core disciplines. Um, simple ones, if you start something, finish it. Um, mm. I'll make sure he does uh, sports just to understand physicality and then also put that into mm. emotional. Like you have to thrive for the thing that you want. If it's, this is what you want, make sure you finish it. If, if you really want it, make sure you put the hardest work. Try to be the best at it. Be competitive those types of core disciplines so that with whatever he says he likes he knows what i'm going to expect from him if he says he likes that because i'm trying to teach him disciplines you know the epitome of a celebrity now some would say michael jackson is an epitome of a celebrity some would say michael jordan some would say beyonce some would say jay-z the epitome of a celebrity in mzanzi who would you class as the epitome as a celebrity in South Africa. AKA. Yeah. Nelson Mandela? No. Nelson Mandela is, is, is probably the true celebrity in, in, in the sense of he's globally celebrated mm -hmm. in the sense of the word, you know? Mm -hmm. But today's era and what celebrity means, I don't know if it means that exact same thing. So if I say to you the highest epitome of a celebrity, you say AKA. For our generation. Yeah. For our generation, I guess. Mandela is no longer ours. <sighs> he's ours, he's from us. But if you're saying just in South Africa, Madiba's a global figure, bro. Yeah, he's quite global. Yeah, he's, he's a global figure. In South Africa, like, who's the celeb in SA? It's the AKA's. Uh, Bonang, um, this Trevor one. You see, Trevor's another one where it's like, yeah, I think we have to define what celebrity is. Mm. But he's gone though. Like, uh, if we're saying South Africa, yeah, he's not. Trevor's not, known. He's, he's global, you know. It's global. Okay. If your partner was to cheat on you once, is that it? Is that a deal breaker? Yeah. Partner as a girlfriend? Yes, as a so girlfriend, this is, this spouse, is, this is wife. Wife. <laughs> 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 nah, those are two nah, different nah, nah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but wait, I mean, okay, I'm saying basically Those are partner. two different things. I'm basically telling you those are two different answers I'm so taking. The, the, the statement reads, if your partner cheats on you once. Partner that could be girlfriend. It might not be wife. So if I say your partner cheats on you once, what does Tavisha do? Or what does Big Time do? For me, it's a rap. It's a rap. Really? Once? Yeah. It's, right. it's different from my wife, bro. It, out of curiosity, if I was to flip the switch and say, if you were to cheat on your partner once, would you expect her to leave? Or would you think she would I don't would have leave? any expectations. Would you think she would leave? I don't I have don't any know. expectations. That is interesting, eh? I don't have any expectations. I don't know. If she... If she does, I understand. She uh, doesn't... I understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I just but, both, but both times I will want to understand. Yes. If she bounces and she says why, I understand. Yeah. If she stays, I want to understand yeah. what that why? is about. Why? You know, yeah. so that I am able to figure out if hey, can out. I tap into that as well? Mm -hmm. You know, that level of I don't know, bro. I I don't want it to sound like someone we, we can't forgive people. I, I think you can forgive and move on without somebody. True. I don't yeah. want it to sound like we're saying, or I'm saying, oh, if she cheats, it's a wrap. I'm not forgiving her. I could forgive, but I, I'm out. It's the end of the relationship. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out.
Wow. <laughs> the best alcoholic beverage in the country or for you? Yo. Wow, but we have to say mojito. Mojito. Yeah. yeah. Hey, why didn't yeah. I think about mojito? You wear it all the time, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just like, mojito, yeah. yeah. Mojito. Yeah. The best. Over Southern Comfort? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. interesting. No longer a soccer boy, guys. I mean, talk to you, brutal food or brutal food? Ah, <laughs> uh, you like brutal fruit? No. No. Why do you like a penny drink, dog? Bro, I don't like no brutal fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so mojito is the top tier, guys. Top tier. Yeah, so right now, especially if it's made. Nah. Yes, obviously, yes. It can be a vibe. You can hang. Obviously, Feel. yes. Something that is becoming a phenomenon in South Africa, content creation in South Africa. Mm -hmm. What do you make of content creation in South Africa? I mean, it depends. That's, that's very broad. Was the, what's is it the something you want to... What's the standard at? Do you rate the standard of South Africa creating content where it's at? You think it could be better? I think you we're think coming up, man. Yeah. I think a lot of content creators are coming up. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the previous episode, we spoke about um, the difference between going on Podcast and Chill and Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club, you know? And we chose Podcast and Chill. I don't know how people watch Podcast and Chill. We all watch it for different reasons. But I genuinely think those guys are on the pulse as far as balancing... The content and freestyling, mm. what's happening in the moment. Mm. You know, they know how to really tap in with what's happening whilst making it their own. Mm. It doesn't feel like they are reporting the news. You know, it doesn't feel serious. It, it doesn't feel too, too ignorant, though they might have started that way. But I think they found a nice place, you know. Um, I can't speak for all other content creators. But I think it's coming up in South Africa. And that's why we're also here, you know. We, we have a perspective to share about the same subjects we're all talking about, you know. And we're giving each other different options. To like, oh, I like how those guys talk about this. And cloud chasing? You feel that that's at least dying out if no. we are getting better, or no. are people still vigorously chasing clout? Vigorously chasing clout. <laughs> <laughs> I have a different opinion, but go. Nah, bro. Why would you say that? Bro, my youth, bro, do anything for clout, bro. I've seen a lot of people do crazy stuff for clout, and I'm just like, it only got 300 views. That's crazy that you would do that. But that's 300 no, more than zero. No, bro, there's, there's some things I wouldn't do for no amount of views. I am not doing it. But anymore. why are you not doing it? Because I'm not willing to stoop that low. But some people might not be stooping low. They might be trying to get their name out there. Nah. There's always a level that you need to know it not to push. <laughs> they, I understand there are points where you need to stretch yourself. But you got to have a little bit. For instance, again, we're saying the podcast and chill. Mm -hmm. There was an episode where they trended years back for speaking on the LGBTQI mm -hmm. uh, community. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It was really ignorant the way they spoke about it, mm -hmm. right? The next episode, they had someone from the community to help them understand the nuances uh, that part of it that was offensive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you ne they needed to make the mistake in order to learn how to do it better. But you wouldn't but regard that's cloud chasing. Yeah, but you wouldn't regard podcast and jail as cloud chasing. That's not cloud chasing. But that episode, when they were cloud chasing in that episode. In that at that episode, when they have moments like that, some people could say it's cloud chasing. But that's how you if, could argue if, that. Like, it's if, easier to say this about the community in a funny laughing way we're laughing ha 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 even even though i wouldn't define that as vigorous cloud chasing i'm mm -hmm. talking about like if somebody you at a store you're trying to buy something and somebody 
throws powder on your face. That's just yeah, that's you crazy. Don't, you don't gotta do that, bro. <laughs> you might I mean, there are consequences that, for that. Th that's why I'm saying. Yeah. For me, that's that's too vigorous. If you're gonna go out like ruining people's day, mm -hmm. this is is a very interesting way of cloud chasing. Right? But now, now we're go we're going in the realm of respect and some kind yeah. of morality. But I think vigorous cloud chasing is a form of disrespect. Okay. Even self disrespect, I guess. Yes. Yes. Okay. The next one, I'm going to read out a statement. You guys tell me if you think it's true or false. The next generation of women coming are not chasing careers. The next generation the next of women, women are, are not chasing, chasing careers. careers. Facts. I think I believe that. Facts. I know I, I believe that. that. Yeah. I know I believe if, that. If they're not chasing careers, what are they chasing? Household. Yeah. Housewife. Housewife. Family. It's coming back. Yeah, it's coming it's back around. Full circle. Is that is that good or bad? I think it's, it's good, good that they're chasing family. Family, you know. I think we all need to be chasing family. Absolutely, because we innately want to chase them. Innately, because think about it, right? We we all have been taught that life is you get to this part of life, you study. When you're done studying, you job, mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. get married, have kids, da da da, and a lot of us judged the norms of success because certain things we didn't feel aligned with us our personality mm. or whatever now i think what's happening is we're actually seeing the value yes. of certain traditional norms mm. and why it needs to be part of our life's journey now other people can choose to do life on their own but to the question of are the next generation of women chasing, not chasing their careers, I believe that because you can see how many women are being outspoken yeah. about yeah. the values that were misinterpreted yeah. that we should be appreciating yeah. as the new generation of adults. That's interesting because you bring me on to the next statement which is men don't provide as much anymore. Is that true or false? Don't provide for what? As the family. family. I oh, that's tricky, man. I, I can't say men that. who are in families, I think they are mm. providing. Uh, I don't know what the as stats. Much. Yeah, I think it's a little harsh to say as much because like things have become more expensive. Um, if you're looking at South Africa, the economy has become extremely harder. So if a large population of women are also going to be going to work, it's going to indefinitely become harder for you as a guy because the market is growing. So now it's going to become more difficult for you to find a job. Mm -hmm. So I, can't say I think that's tough, man. We can't, we can't just blame them for it. Mm. But it's like, if we're going to look at in terms of minimum level so if we look at minimum wage average minimum wage um that's a way i think we'd have to calculate it from because just because a lot more of the population has higher standards does not mean that the people are producing less it's just the standard is increasing mm. you get what i'm saying so it may be granted that yes there are some men who are doing less but it it's part and parcel with the standard rising. Hey Amen. I think we need to factor in a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not living in the old days. <laughs> nah, things bro. are not the same. It's not. Uh, capitalism isn't the same as yeah. what it was before. The economy is changing. Um, I think we're debating and arguing about the wrong things. Like, should a woman do this? Should yeah. men do that? Mm -hmm. We should just be coming together and figuring out a way to do life together. Like, yo, we, I like what I have with you. Um, this is my vision for our life, my life. What's your vision for your life, our life? See how we can bring it together. What do you have? What do I have? What are your strengths? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? If we share the same weakness, how do we mitigate that? You know, I think that's how we should be looking at doing relationships together. As for this whole... If we're caught too much in the in the semantics, mm. 
and you want to be in a relationship, but you're caught too much in the semantics, are you ever going to be in a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. And you bring me on to the final point. Does marriage still hold value and it's still, it's still something everyone must, I wouldn't say chase, but must, must do? Mm. Yes. Does marriage still hold value and must everybody still do it? I think what holds value is the principle. What works for your relationship. This, this thing of, oh, marriage or this or that. If it doesn't work for your relationship, you have to know what you're signing up for, man. You know, if I'm saying, me and my lady, we want to get married. Okay, what do we understand about marriage? Because mm -hmm. it can be a nice dream. We've been sold this growing up. What do we understand, you know? Like, what are the things we need to be aware of? What are the legalities? Forget your emotions and feelings, you know? What does it mean if we sign this paper? You know, how much of your individuality is still there, you know? If someone sues me, are they suing the, 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 the couple? Or can they sue just me? All those things were not taught. The whole prenup and in community of property, all those things affect your life as a professional in your journey, you know? So after you know what marriage is, what it entails, and you've done therapy, uh, couple counseling, marriage counseling, before you get into it, if you are like, this is the model that's going to work for what we're trying to build, then get married. You know, I think what, it, what he's saying is facts, but I think in terms of just like statistically, it holds no value. Because divorce rate is uh, it's high. Yeah. high. So that means it doesn't have value if something is just constantly... But I think the divorce rate is high because people are walking into long-term agreements without understanding what being in a long-term you know, conglomerate is. means. means yeah. you know? Are two people capable of being in long-lasting relationships without getting married? Yes. 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 Yeah, people are capable of being in long-lasting relationships without being married. Again, you and what you're building needs to be content with that. Because I think people think that whether you get married or not get married, if I go this way, I'm dodging the cons of this journey. You're not. Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons every path you walk. And you're bound to find out when you walk that path, what the cons of doing life this way is. You have to figure out, I, am I good with this con? Is it too many cons that I don't appreciate? Then you can make switches, you know? But certain agreements, hey man. Also, I'm also of the belief that making covenants is not a spiritual joke. Yeah. Some people make covenants yes. in the name of God without understanding mm. the divine contract they are signing. It's like a thank you. Got cut off. I don't know where my last chain of thought was, but I think I remember saying we, we need to take the idea of making long-term commitments more seriously, I believe, especially when we involve spirituality. Because sometimes we understand what we are signing and what we are getting into in the physical realm, but we don't understand what we are signing and getting into in the spiritual realm. People enter a marriage making so much effort and make the least effort when they're exiting it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the ramifications of exiting it without the same rituals that one did coming in that they should do going out and the last point that i want to find out is two people get an apartment moving together and live happily ever after are you okay with that okay i'll start yeah. i'm okay with it if they're okay with it you know, if your 
happy, living together, doing life together, not getting married, um, and just doing you, sharing resources. It's a different way, you know, and if that way works for you, who am I to intervene? It works for you. All I'm saying is if I choose to move this way, which might be the opposite of what you're doing, don't judge me for living my life the way I need to live my life. Either way, whichever path we all choose, entering it with the mindset of there are no cons, there are no negatives in this part of my journey, now you are lying to yourself. Mm. And maybe you need to find out in order to realize, maybe I didn't think this one all the way through. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think like, you can, I think we're gonna see a lot more of that in our generation because of just how everything is set up, the way like male and female is chasing the bag or they both wanting a relationship and it's i think it just it's gonna have a lot of couples just having been at a place where i work she works we vibe we wanna continue to grow we've been dating for two three years and it's like it's easy if she stays with me so are you okay with that you yeah i mean people staying together yeah i think it, if if it works if if the if y'all both can come to a level of agreement because that type of a decision is still a big decision and it's still gonna have mm. a lot of diverse expectations from each other because uh, now can i throw a grenade I, into this okay throw a grenade throw a slight grenade is the cool. last one what if some people may see it as but that's a way of avoiding lobola that's a way of avoiding that yeah that's true you know but is lobola for all cultures does it mean the same thing is it losing its meaning? Do we remember the inception of Lobola? Is it still carrying out the same uh, message behind it? You know, I don't know. I don't have all the answers. But all I know is some people are misusing traditional norms to make money out of people. Yeah. Some people. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted to insert my uh, opinion because I, I, I was watching this spiritual conversation that I enjoyed. They said, um, anybody can be a baby daddy, but not everybody can be a father. You. Yeah. Right? Everybody can build a nation, create a nation, right? Give birth to kids, yeah. children. But only families create dynasties. Yeah. Only families create dynasties. So, my opinion to the whole marriage or you not married thing, it depends what you want to build. Mm. If you want to build a system that you can leave behind, that continues and is a loop, then there's a lot to think about in terms of how to build that. If you just want to do life with somebody and you guys want to die, whatever, and things, whatever you leave behind goes to goes back to the government, then that's you. But if you want to build a family, you want to build a legacy, you, you have this vision of what you want to build and how you want to put it together, I'm not saying it's marriage, but that's more meticulous than just, we're flowing, we're living together, I'm just doing yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a strategy in that. And you need to ensure that you are working towards this goal mm -hmm. that you want to have, mm -hmm. you know? If there's no goal and just want to do what you want to do, do what you want to do, you know? But I, I just think all these things, bro, are meticulous. They're more meticulous than we think. Mm 